Hey, what's up, friends? It's Kenyon, and welcome to Evolution Ave, home of real estate evolved in a limitless mindset. Now, this episode is the Leonidas Leadership episode. Yes, Leonidas Leadership. Remember the movie 300? Remember how Leonidas had his people ready to defend their country, go to war, and win at all costs? Well, there's something fundamentally missing in the world of entrepreneurship and the world of sales performance today, and that's we don't have that anymore. Back in the day, we used to have that type of camaraderie, that type of motivation and empowerment from sales leaders. As entrepreneurs, we would make sure our people were motivated and the people that were coaching and mentoring us made sure we were motivated to go out there and totally dominate and light the world on fire. So we need to bring that back. And that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. So if you love the content, please like, subscribe and share. And let's get to the episode. Welcome to the episode. This episode is the Leonidas Leadership episode. Like I said in the intro, there is something that's fundamentally missing from the world of entrepreneurship. There is something that's fundamentally missing from sales performance these days. What happened to leadership? What happened to CEOs? What happened to sales VPs, sales managers, or the, the new title of CRO? What happened to the days where they weren't more concerned about what's wrong and they were more concerned about or more excited about what if or what could be or what could happen what's possible nowadays we get in sales meetings we go to sales kickoffs or qbrs and all these different things and either the leader the vp of sales the sales managers the cro's they stand up and there's no motivation there's no energy there's no i'm going to empower you to go out there and win i look at the world of entrepreneurship and the world of sales as a sport we're sports we're business athletes and as business athletes what do coaches do if you're in a game, you're down by a few touchdowns, you're down by two with 1.2 seconds left, you're down in the match, whatever it is, what does your coach do? What does your team do? It's, it's, it's they, you have to develop camaraderie, you have to get the energy to win, you have to light a fire under people, and we don't have that anymore. Back in the day, when I was coming up in the early days, and, and some of you may remember this if you've been in sales long enough, that's what one-on-ones with your manager was that's what the ceo of your company or the leader of your company they would meet with their advisors get pumped up by their advisors and come back and bring that energy to his company so his company can go out and win that's what sales kickoffs used to be about that's what sales meetings used to be about they were meant to get you going so you can go out there and freaking just put some lightning in your body and, and in your mind you just light the world on fire we don't even see that anymore it's literally the same mundane conversations of what's wrong opposed to what's possible. So we have to get back to that. I think if we're gonna have a better entrepreneurship culture, if we're gonna have a better sales performance culture, we have to get back to that. So I don't know what happened, but what I do know is we have to get that type of energy back. Think about old school leadership. That was old school leadership. Old school leadership was I'm gonna fire you up. I'm not gonna you know, tell you all the negative things to get you fired up. I'm gonna tell you all the positive things to get you fired up. A great example of that is let me tell you a story. When I was young, I didn't like going to church. I grew up in Trent, New Jersey, went to a Baptist church. And I don't know about you, but Baptist churches or most churches, a lot of churches, and not even just churches, whatever your cultures or beliefs are, it was a lot of, well, if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. You're going to hell. Hell and brimstone was the way. Who, I don't know about you, but I didn't want to go to church and hear about me going to hell for two hours. I just, I just didn't. But something I noticed a few years ago, I was down in Atlanta, Georgia, and you know, you have the rise of mega churches and you have the rise of, of pastors or leaders becoming younger or not even younger, just, they're just more vibrant individuals. And they don't preach about going to hell anymore. They preach about goodness. They preach about what's possible, they're inspiring. And now you see young people, millennials, of all people from all walks of life, of all ages, different cultures, they're flocking into these uh, establishments now. They're flocking into these facilities to hear the word. 
led by a leader who was inspiring them. Now, I know some people are going to say, oh, Kenyon, you know, you're talking about those prosperity preachers or and that's not good. What's wrong with prosperity? What's wrong with being prosperous? What's wrong with seeking a prosperous life? Even in the spiritual words, we're supposed to live a prosperous life. Nowhere says that we're supposed to be motivated by fear, motivated by getting fired, motivated by being reprimanded. None of those things are keys to life. None of those things are things that enhance life or even motivate you to live a prosperous life. You want to live a prosperous life, in my opinion. Not even an opinion. That's a fact. I, you're telling me that someone is more or less motivated by what if I dominate and make a lot of money? What if I'm so good at this, it allows me to travel anywhere I want, whenever I want in the world? What if I'm so great at this that I'm free mentally and financially? You're telling me that people are less motivated by that and more motivated by what you did wrong, what you need to do if you don't do it? See, to get the best output out of a human, you have to put really good input into that human. What you input dictates the output. And these days, you're not getting that from an entrepreneur or a sale or a CEO. You're not getting that from sales leadership. I can tell you that if you want people to perform at a high level, you have to inspire them, you have to empower them, you have to motivate them. I, I, I call this the Leonidas leadership episode because think about the movie 300. I don't know about you, but I get excited every time I watch that movie. I get excited at the scenes where Leonidas is screaming, he's yelling, this is Sparta. Like that to me is leadership. I think of the Wolf of Wall Street where basically who wants to get rich, who wants to make millions? If you're in sales, if you're in real estate, if you're selling cars, I don't care what door to door, you're selling copiers, I don't care what you're selling. And everything in the world is sales and marketing. So no matter how you spin it, if you're an architect, if you're a plastic surgeon, you're selling something. And if your job is to build business, chase people, not money, right? That's what I always say. Don't chase money, chase people, because the people have the money. And you need to be inspired. You need to know that I'm going to go out there and win. You need to have a, a winning and positive attitude. You need that type of input to get that type of output, the output of high performance. So I think about so like my very first or one of my very first sales managers. His name was John McKinney. Awesome guy. I will never forget John because here I am working at a small bank or a regional bank. And our weekly sales meetings were about getting fired up to go out there and make the calls, getting fired up to go out there and connect with as many of our, our bank customers as possible. And if we were in a rut, our one-on-ones were getting us out of that rut. It wasn't, this is why you're in a rut, you suck, this is what needs to happen, you're inadequate. This need, No, our one-on-ones or our team meetings were inspiring. The reason for that was, I want you guys to get out there and make the calls. I want you to you know, greet customers and perform at your highest level. And that's what we did after having those sales meetings with John. That's what we did after having a one-on-one -on -one with John. So I, I believe that we need to get back to that. I believe that we need to get motivated because what's happening is this. Entrepreneurs are quitting. And there's a lot of reasons behind starting something and quitting. A lot of times we stop and we start and we stop and we start because the why isn't big enough. But a lot of times we stop and we start because we're simply just not motivated. Sometimes we get lost in what our why is because we're not reminded of why we're doing it. And that's the purpose. When you're playing in a game and you're an athlete, your coach at halftime is reminding you why you're on that field and why you're going to go back out there and win. And I think that we, we forget about that. Salespeople are quitting left and right. Sales leaders, the sales manager role has become – Part of my French, one of the shittiest roles in a sales organization because shit rolls downhill. That's what I always hear. And it's because their leadership is harping on them. And then in turn, the sales manager is pretty much destroying their salespeople. That's why salespeople quit or that's why they move so much. Salespeople don't even care about being at a company that long. They care about the money. And if you're somewhere where a person is in your organization and they're only there for the money, then 
chances are you're not going to get a great return on that person because they're not going to stay that long. The minute another company offers them more money, offers them unlimited PTO or other things that benefit them, they're going to be out. They, there's no loyalty anymore because they're not motivated. They don't want to play for you. Listen, if you're a sales leader, if you're a CEO, or if you're uh, uh, someone, a coach, you need to be Vince Lombardi. You need to have people who want to perform at a high level because you inspire them to do so. And that's what we're missing. I want it back so bad that one of the reasons why I've had a lot of sales manager opportunities and that would have been a way for me to maybe go up into the VP ranks of, of organizations that I worked for when, when I was a W-2 employee. But one, I, I didn't admire their role. I didn't admire you know, their life. And what I want to do is I love speaking to people. I'm here to inspire and motivate and empower. This is what I love to do. This is unscripted. I don't have any, this isn't an agenda for me. This is just what I love. I'm doing this out of the, this, I just love doing this, right? So if you are a leader, if you are in a position to help people and to motivate people to perform, you have to give them the motivation. You have to empower them. You have to inspire them to go do so. That's the only way you get great output out of people. That's the only way you're going to get people to perform at a high level. And it's going to stop people from, it's going to stop sales leaders from being miserable. It's going to stop the people above them from not being, you know, a charismatic leader. And it's going to help salespeople in general stop job hopping so much because look, all of us have been on sales kickoffs or sales meetings. We're more excited about the, the team dinners and the happy hours than we are about the reason why we're there, to learn about something that our company is doing or to get fired up with each other so we can go back home to our respective territories or wherever we are and go and light the world on fire. That's not what excites us anymore. So we have to get back to that. I'm going to start the business athlete inner circle because we are business athletes. We're high performing individuals and we want to win. So with the business athlete inner circle, and you know, I do believe that you don't value what you don't pay for. So I, you know, look, it's not going to be something crazy. It's going to be something maybe, I don't know, uh, you're going to sacrifice a few Starbucks a month, maybe 45 bucks a month or something like that. But I'm going to develop a community because if you're a sales leader and you need to get better or you need to just be able to motivate your people more, if you are a sales professional and you don't have that and you need it, it's going to be a place for you to come. If you're a CEO or an entrepreneur, this is where you're going to come and collaborate and connect with other people, like-minded people, who we all want the same thing. We all want to win, and we all believe in motivation, we all believe in inspiration, and we all believe in empowerment to do so. We're business athletes. We need that fire. We need that energy, that lightning bolt to just strike us so we can just go out there and win and dominate and light the world ablaze with our skills and perform at a high level. More information to come on the business athlete in a circle. I think that's going to be something that you don't want to miss. You're going to want to be a part of that community because it's necessary. We need it. You are necessary. You want to win. And a lot of times you just need to remember or figure out or just be reminded of what your why is and why it's so important. And you need that inspiration and, and collaboration does that. And not to mention, you're going to be able to collaborate with so many like-minded people. It's going to be a great place to build yourself and to find growth in your leadership, to find growth in your career. It's going to be amazing. More details to come on that. So, so as always, if you love this content, please like, subscribe, and share on my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram at realestateagent007. DM me if you have any questions. Connect with me. I love connecting and building out my network, building out my circle of friends. And uh, in the meantime, y'all stay super blessed.